That's awesome. So we're going to dive into that a little more later, but you're originally from Canada? I am. Where were you in Canada? I'm from the Texas of Canada. I'm from Alberta. <laughs> so, cattle and oil, my friend. That's what she's all about. But nice. uh, yeah, I'm from uh, about a five hour drive to the Montana border. So that's how you want to put it in perspective. So yeah. shoot straight down to the border and, and that's where I'm from. So yeah, I, I grew up there. I lived a good chunk of my life there. It was, uh, let's see, 14 years ago now that I... Uh, wow. I made the move to the States. You know, we Canadians, we infiltrate a little bit, you know, as my husband always likes to say, but if you stood everybody in a lineup, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> Except it did take me seven years of living here before I finally stopped saying organization. <laughs> so for workforces to make it a priority in how they are hiring, how they're retaining, how they're recruiting employees is going to be essential because when they do, it benefits them. I was reading some research because I always do that before I come on with you, Jason. And um, DeVry was reporting some numbers about um, the U.S. becoming a majority minority nation by 2043. That's 20 oh, wow. years from now. Um, I would love to see a lot more investment into the neurodivergent community, um, not just monetarily, but time, resources. Um, you know, whether it's at a, at a, uh, private or public level, you know, federal state, whatever the case may be, because there's, there are funds available. Like I'm not a budget person, but there are funds period. Yes. Um, I'm digging deeper into that. Um, the thing that I always like to leave with and it, I I've gotten backlash for it, but it's my quote. So I'm sticking to it. Um, as a person with an indivis invisible disability, uh, what I believe is that a disability is not an inability to do something. What I believe is that it is an opportunity to go an alternate path to arrive at a solution. There's so many job seekers out there right now, and there's so many people looking for jobs, and half the battle is getting a job, but also half the battle is getting a job that's going to pay you fair wage. And I'm seeing yep. so much right now where companies are taking advantage of potential employers because they look at the, the landscape right now and they see all these people looking for jobs and they think to themselves, oh, well, if we just make a job offer to them and we give somebody a job, that's going to be good enough because people just want to make money. They don't care how much they make. They just want to get back to the workforce. But that could be far. That's far from the truth. People still need to make money to afford their bills, to yep. afford their mortgage, to put food on the table. So I want to encourage companies to stop with that mindset, bring good people on board and pay them fairly and dip into your budget a little bit more. It's okay. You CEOs make a lot of money out there. Dip into your budgets, pay people fairly and make people want to work for you and stay with you a long time because that's how you avoid turnover and you make happy people want to be at your company. The first thing that comes to my mind, and thank you for that question, Jason. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is that if we don't pour into people, people can't pour from an empty vessel. We most definitely have got to exhibit understanding, empathy. We've got to be interested in their personal and professional development. And we've got to build an environment where they can thrive and grow. One of my favorite taglines, it's mine, I made it up, is that an organization's culture is the soil in which all things grow. And so we've got to provide a nurturing and foster that soil, that environment, that culture, so that we can create an, a place where our people can grow. Uh, we've got to put them first. We've got to grow them. We've got to develop them, show interest in them the empathy, the understanding, because they cannot pour from an empty vessel. And so we talk about leadership. What is leadership? It's not a title. It's really moving people forward to make them visible so they can make more money, make an impact, be in front of the client to understand how their work matters. It's not only a paycheck. It's not only uh, an exchange of services, right? Um, so I, I talk and my husband tells me, you need to pay attention to your, 
your face because you get a little bit too excited. Um, so you need to stop and slow down. Not you. really. Not no, you. not <laughs> not me. No, we need to build a trust. We need to have safety. We need to have respect. That's the only way this is going to work. And for those of us that are you know, advocates or allies, right? Speaking up when we see something that we can call inclusivity to, right? I've seen plenty of situations where I'm seeing unfair treatment and I have to call that out because that person might not be comfortable to do it themselves. So speaking up and just bringing attention to that to make sure that there is inclusivity for all. Citation of genuine, authentic feedback from um, leadership about themselves as leaders. And another thing that also is kind of like, wait, huh? Affinity groups, having groups where you have an affinity towards this, it, 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 it generates and it cultivates that sense of inclusivity and belonging. And you can come to work and feel safe to know that, okay, I have people that I can lean on with vulnerable stuff, personal stuff. And within those groups, the intent, the intention of creating those groups is not to be um, me versus you, but hey, this is where I identify with, this is what you identify with. Okay, so let's see how we can come to a place of collaboration. Let's see how we can yeah. understand each other from our differences. Let's see how we can work towards building and creating a place that's more inclusive. And so those two things, feedback that's very genuine and that's needed from from towards leadership and um, affinity groups. We're looking at people that are coming out of being incarcerated, have to rebuild their entire lives. People that have been on the streets that have been battling addictions and need to escape that lifestyle and transform themselves into using that addictive personality towards something positive. That's the transformation that I had to go through. My addictions, once I conquered and really had a hold on being able to push drugs away, then it became food. Even though I knew I had all of these certifications and I knew how to be healthy and I was in the gym and I, I worked out and I ran and I biked, yet someone that was 5'8 and was 225 pounds of pure muscle in college ended up being out of shape and 400 pounds. So your addictions will move with you. Now I use my addictions to talk to others, to help others, and to focus all my attention in on the work that we do. And that is what helps me.